a lot of times you pull up for your first showing and you walk up to the front steps and the first thing you get a good look at is your agent's rear end. Hi, this is Cameron at Colorado Team Real Estate. And I'm Kirsten, agent here at Colorado Team. And in this video, we are talking about the things you should look at whenever you are touring a home. A lot of times you pull up for your first showing and you walk up to the front steps and the first thing you get a good look at is your agent's rear end because they are up there, bent over, getting the keys out of the lockbox. So what are some things we can do during that time? Well, I think I would start with uh, checking out the neighborhood. Um, as we know, location is key in real estate. So let's really focus on what does the neighbor's house look like? What does the streets look like as far as are there broken down cars down the street? Overall cleanliness of the neighborhood, things that you cannot fix, um, giving yourself a chance to evaluate if this is going to be a good fit for you in terms of um, resale, things of that sort. Yeah, I think parking goes along with that. If there's any street parking and what kind of parking you've got inside the driveway. And then also I like to listen for any road noise or airplane noise. If mm -hmm. we've got overhead air noise, that's uh, a True. deal breaker for some people, especially if it's the fighter jets and they're going hard. Right. Um, and then usually while we're outside, um, kind of automatically go into checking out the exterior of the home. So as an agent, as a buyer, what are a couple of the main things that uh, you like to check out on the exterior? So one of the you know biggest issues we have with a house is water intrusion. So if we can keep water away from a house, that's going to solve 90% of the issues that we typically see come up. So outside, we want to make sure this has got good paint. There's no rot around the windows or around the doors. And then also check the negative grade. This is whenever the yard slopes back towards the house. So when it rains or snows, all that moisture goes towards the foundation and then down. And that's what causes a lot of the foundation issues that we have. Right. And then also while we're usually typically out back um, is checking out the AC, assuming the house has an AC unit, that, that is a great chance to just kind of do a quick overview. What is the age looking like? What is the condition looking like? Because that's a huge expense, right? So um, we also usually hit that while we're outside. Yeah. A quick way to check the age of a uh, AC unit is it's a lot of times the third and fourth number of the serial number, but we're going to give you uh, an easy way to check that out and get the actual age at the end of this. Yeah. So finishing the outside, you go inside, um, overall layout. What are some things that we constantly hear or like oversights? Layout is all about the buyer. What's going to fit you? I would say one of the biggest, um, issues we run into right now is that a lot of the furniture that we own doesn't fit into the living room. So know the size of your L shaped couch, if that's what you got so that you can check the living room and not have to schedule a second showing or call the seller later and ask what those measurements are. Yes. Also, um, we hear a lot of, oh gosh, I didn't think about that in terms of bathrooms. Yes. So two versus three bathrooms. So you have your ensuite bathroom, which is great for you. You have a main bathroom, which is great for your kids. Well, then you have a guest come over. The guest is using said kid's bathroom, which is disgusting. And now you're going, oh God, I wish I had a half bath for these guests to use. So something to pay attention to that a lot of times you just kind of overlook is half baths can be a life saving addition. Yeah, absolutely. Also, while you're inside, you want to take a good look at the structure there too. So make sure you don't have any fogged windows or broken windows. And then also check for any leaks. So just kind of look around the ceiling, look if there's any um, leaks in the ceiling, any um, sorry, uh, structural cracks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if there's any structural issues, that's going to happen around the corners of the windows and the doors. So you'll notice windows are hard to open or close. Doors are, you know, not hitting the latch properly. Mm -hmm. So these are the a couple of things that I like to look for whenever I'm inside. And then I would say biggest ticket items in terms of money are going to also be the um, water heater and your furnace. So really uh, paying attention to what you have going on with that in terms of age and overall condition. Um, and so, as you mentioned, we have a website that we can plug in the serial number to said uh, um, appliances and kind of get an idea of what we're looking at if this is on its last year of life or <laughs> if it's brand new. So what is that, uh, what's that site? Go to building-center.org and put the serial number in there. So if you are serious about a house, just take a picture of the serial number on the water heater, on the furnace, and on the AC unit. Take that home, put it into the building-center.org. That's going to give you the age of those appliances. Perfect. And then another thing is the basement flooring. So this one's not talked about a whole lot, but we have structural floors and then we have concrete floors, concrete being the most common. A structural floor is wood. So it's built up off the ground and it solves a lot of this, um, 
settling issues that we have in Colorado. So that structural floor allows the ground to move up and down without affecting anything in the flooring of the house. So I love those systems. And whenever we see them, typically we see less radon issues because they've got fans already built into the system to exhaust the air from underneath the structural floor. So concrete though, if you see a crack in the concrete, what is a good rule of thumb for like, hey, this is okay, or hey, we have an issue is in terms of how wide the crack is. Isn't there a rule of thumb? Yeah, and it actually is your thumb. Oh, <laughs> so, I'm so smart. A structural engineer is not going to do anything with the property in most cases unless it's a quarter inch or bigger. So if you can fit your thumb in there, I would take a picture of it and just track it over time to see if the settling's already happened or if this is an active issue, typically about one year. So if you do see that get bigger over a year, call in a structural engineer. There's movement happening right now. Got it. If it does not move, just continue watching it for the next year. But until there's a quarter inch, they typically don't touch it, don't want anything to do with it. Okay. So excellent. Well, if you have any questions or if there's any properties you want to take a look at to reach out to us, we're here to help whenever the time's right for you. Thanks so much. Thanks.